بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters No matter how pious you are No matter how close you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You will definitely taste a little bit of loss There has to come a day in your life Wherein which you suffer some loss Because that is part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how many prayers you pray a day beyond your farad and that which is compulsory, you will still be tested. And the reason why I start this way is because there are people who say, why is this happening to me when I pray five times a day, as well as tahajjud, as well as my sunnah, as well as my nafil, when I'm honest, when I'm a good person, when I don't cheat, when I don't steal, when I don't hurt people, why can I not get a job? Why have I lost my job? Why did I lose a family member, be it a child or a spouse or a parent or a sibling, whoever it may be? Why did, for example, my factory burn down? Why did, for example, uh, my health degenerate? Allah says, it's got nothing to do with whether you've prayed or not. It's got nothing to do with whether you are close to us or not. In fact, if anything, the closer you get to Allah, a sign of it is that he is going to test you more. The Prophet ﷺ says clearly, so beautifully, إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا إِبْتَلَاهُ When Allah loves his slave, his worshipper, then he tests him, real tests. So you lost your job, you just cannot get another job. Something went wrong in your life, it's just not coming right. Do you know what? Stick in there, don't give up. Continue to obey Allah, become closer to Allah because... Everyone suffers loss. A believer, the days are made easy for him or her. You are content. Someone told you your car was damaged right off. The first thing you said was Alhamdulillah. At least no one was injured. At least, for example, the injury was little. No one lost their lives. You always look at what could have been in terms of being worse. That's a believer. A believer always looks at how... It could have been worse, but it's not. Subhanallah. This is a gift of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we say, don't think because I'm a pious person or because I read Quran every day, I'm not going to be tested. You will be tested, but Allah will give you contentment throughout your test. That is the difference. But if you're not a believer or if your faith is shaking, you become very depressed and stressed and angry and upset and you start questioning Allah and you become distance from Allah and you throw yourself further into bad habits. Some people resort to drinking and drugs and everything else to intoxicate themselves, to run away from the reality of the problem. But Allah told you, you know what? We have tested the messenger before you. We're going to test all of you. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِهِمْ Indeed, the fitna, fitna means a test. You know, fitna is not a derogatory term. I think there is a difference in meaning regarding the word fitna between Arabic and Urdu. So in the Arabic language, a fitna means a test. You will all be tested. And in the Urdu language, a fitna, sometimes it's looked at as something beyond that. May Allah grant us good guidance. We're talking of the Arabic language. Allah says, the fitna or the test will reach every one of you just like it reached all of those before you. It has to be. Look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't we always say, afdalul الْخَلْقِ وَأَكْرَمُ rusuli, Which means the best of creation, the most honored of all prophets of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The years in Makkatul Mukarramah, did they not suffer persecution? Did they not go through a tough time? Imagine 10 years, people are persecuting you. That's okay. He says, oh Allah, if you are pleased with me and with us, there is nothing more that we ask for. For as long as you are happy with us, all this is nothing. La ilaha illallah. 
That is belief, iman, yaqeen, conviction. That is what it is. Have faith. Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa went through 10 years initially of turmoil, turbulence until they were driven out of their homes. Their properties were stolen. Whatever happened, happened. Did they complain to Allah? Not a single day, not one day. They took it in their stride and they said, Oh Allah, you are our Lord. Make easy for us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went through so much. Then when they went to Medina, Munawwara, the wars began. Literally the enmity became open. Open. The wars began. The battle of Badr, the battle of Uhud, the battle of Khandaq and so many others took place. Who was that? They were playing not with fire, something worse than fire. The most beloved of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were trying to harm the one whom Allah loves the most, the most precious of the lot. What did he say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He says, oh Allah, my people don't know what they're doing. Guide them. La ilaha illallah. Guide them. My people don't know what they're doing. Did he ever become despondent? Not at all. Don't ever give up. Don't become despondent. And don't be sad. You will be the winners. You will be victorious if you are believers. The Prophet ﷺ showed us the ingredient of victory of any difficulty comes with patience. The one who's going to have patience for a longer time will always always be the winner even in warfare the person or the one the group that is prepared to be patient even upon loss they will win the prophet sallam says that i'lam anna nasra ma'as sabr victory will come to the ones who are more patient subhanallah we have seen it in history and we are witnessing it currently may allah grant us ease are you patient in your own life if you are patient and you continue to worship Allah and you improve yourself, victory will come to you. One day, you'll have that business deal you were dreaming about. One day, you'll have a job better than the one you were dreaming about. But that one day might come after 10 years. Are you ready to wait? If you're not, you'll be depressed. Allah forgive us. Then the Prophet ﷺ went through one after the other. They accused him. They said this to him, that about him. They tried. They One day, years later... Allah revealed verses Inna fatahna laka fathan mubina. Indeed, we have granted you a clear victory. Subhanallah. On that day, when these verses were revealed, the victory was not seen in front of them, but it was being promised. The day came when they entered Mecca. They were victorious totally. After how many years? Two decades. Are you ready to wait for two decades? For us, one month we suffered a loss. One year we went through a problem. We give up. Khalas, Allah is angry with me. I don't know what's going on. No longer going to the masjid. I think this, this bad habit, that bad habit. Relax my brothers and sisters. It has happened to those before you who are better than you and I. It's going to happen to you and I in a bigger way. The Prophet ﷺ says, عِظَمُ الْأَجْرِ مَا عِظَمِ الْإِبْتِلَى When the test is bigger, the reward will always be bigger. Bear patience. You will suffer a loss. You might be homeless for a while. No problem. There were others better than you who were homeless. Sometimes you might have to stay in rented accommodation after you owned a home. Because in order to clear your debts, you might have to sell your house. No big deal. The majority of the world is staying in rented accommodation. Why do you think your pride must make you not sell up when you have to? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Get up on your feet again and inshallah you'll do well. Go and study those who have lost their factories to fire. Nearly all of them, if they were patient and they bore sabr and they became closer to Allah, within a few years Allah gave them back 10 times more than what he took away from them. Allah tells the disbelievers that if you believe in Allah and you are firm in faith, Allah will give you back more than what he took away from you. Do you want to hear the verse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لِمَنْ فِي أَيْدِيكُمْ مِنَ الْأَسْرَىٰ O messenger, tell the captives of war, those whom you have taken as prisoners of war, give them the following message. إِنْ يَعْلَمِ اللَّهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ خَيْرًا يُؤْتِكُمْ خَيْرًا مِمَّا أُخِذَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ if Allah, if you know, and Allah knows that in your heart there is goodness, meaning you are going to declare your faith and you are going to become closer to Allah, He will give back to you more than what was taken away from you. And on top of that, He will forgive your sins just by your patience. So bear patience. 
Allah tells us right at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, meaning the first Surah of the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, Why do we miss that verse? Allah says, we will definitely, definitely, definitely test every single one of you without a single exception. You're going to be tested. With what? Shay'im min al-khawf. A bit of fear. Sometimes you're scared. Anxiety. You don't know. Allah says, lay your trust in us. We'll handle that for you. Don't worry. Do your best. Come close to us and be patient. One year, two years, five years. Most of us, it's not even that long, but we are more depressed. Allah says, don't worry. Take it easy. It's going to, we will help you through. Take it in your stride. When al-khawf wal jua Allah says, he will test you with hunger. What is hunger? After you were earning a thousand dollars a week, you start earning much less than that, maybe a hundred, and maybe you don't earn any more at all for a while. So what? You might have to tap into a little bit of your, maybe your reserves for a while. How long? I don't know. You don't know. Allah knows. Be patient. Be patient. Take it in your stride. You might lose produce. People suffer through the drought sometimes, and sometimes there's a bumper harvest. All this is part of the plan of Allah. Don't worry. Are you not a believer? Do you not believe that Allah provides for the ants that you cannot see? And do you think Allah did not see you? You're so big. Allah knows you. He saw you. Make a relation with Allah. See what he does. First thing, he will give you contentment. Instead of eating five morsels of food, you are now eating only two morsels of food. But when you sleep, you are saying, Alhamdulillah, I ate something. Others are not eating anything. That's what it is. But some people, they used to eat 10 morsels. If they have to drop to nine and a half, they can't sleep. How? How? I used to drive the latest Mercedes now. How can I drive a Toyota? How? Brother, between you and I, a Toyota can be better. Just depends which one you got. <laughs> Allah grant us ease. But to be honest, there's nothing wrong to downgrade. Allah kept you that way. Don't be ashamed of who you are and what your standing is. We had yesterday, we don't have today, we will have tomorrow. That's nothing. If we get Jannatul Firdaus, we have succeeded. If I get paradise, oh, that is successful. Truly. In the world, there are so many people who will die as beggars. But on the day of Qiyamah, they will be in the first saf, in the first row. But in the dunya, they had nothing. Subhanallah. I tell you, if technology and advancement and all this that we have had any weight in the eyes of Allah, the first person he would have given it to would have been Rasulullah But he kept the Prophet at an age where there were no mobile phones, no internet, no technology, no even running water from a tap. Have you thought of that? If I tell you today, brother, from tomorrow there's no water, we all have to take a bucket and go to the well, which is five kilometers down, and start filling those buckets. Many people will die of the thought of it. But what happened at the time of the messenger most beloved to Allah? That's what they used to do. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Go to the villages. There are people doing that and thanking Allah that at least they have drops of water. Here we are. Because we are spoiled to have water through a tap. We cannot imagine the downgrading of our lives. May Allah protect us. Indeed, we are human. Oh Allah, we are in sun. We get spoiled. We get used to and accustomed to a more luxurious life. Oh Allah, don't take it away from us. But more important than that, oh Allah, don't be angry with us. When Allah takes something away from you because he's angry with you, you've got a problem. But when Allah takes something away from you because he loves you, you must thank Allah. Hope for the latter and not the former. How do I know that Allah is not angry with me? Well, if Allah gives me contentment through my problem, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that Allah is happy with me. If I have not harassed people, you know, when you suffer a loss, the first thing you should do, ask yourself, have I wronged another human being? Did I steal someone's money? Did I cheat, deceive? Did I swear someone? Did I mock at someone? Did I hurt someone's feelings? If you did, you probably have a problem. Correct yourself. But if you didn't, you are a normal person. You stand up for justice indeed. But at the same time, you have not stolen someone's wealth. You have not harmed, etc., etc. Don't worry. Allah is testing you. So Allah says, we will test you with fear, with hunger, with loss of produce. In your business, sometimes you might lose. Well, amwal, loss of wealth. 
You have something, it's stolen. May Allah protect us. You have something, it is. People say, this was halal. How come it is stolen? My brother, something more halal than yours was stolen from better people than you. Take it in your stride. Thank Allah and move on. Start working on what you can do tomorrow. Stop crying over what is spilt yesterday or today early morning. Allah protect us. No problem. Where were we before? Look at yourself and myself. Take a look at us or our fathers or our grandfathers. Wallahi, in most cases, they could not afford shoes. In most cases, they could not afford clothes as we do today. They couldn't afford a car. Today, everybody's driving a car, but they're complaining. Yesterday, they used to walk without a complaint. Where are we? It shows shaitan is also working, right? You're getting more and you're complaining more. Astaghfirullah. May Allah grant us goodness and good guidance, my brothers, my sisters. The reason I decided to speak on this is many people are struggling on earth through the virus, through so many other factors. Things are turning upside down. Don't become depressed. Keep on making the dhikr of Allah. Allah promises all the time in the Quran. If you have two qualities, you don't need to worry. Sabr and taqwa. That's it. Bear patience. Be good to your wives, be good to your family, go to your family, let them smile. That is a resource that is priceless. What did it cost you to go to your wife, to smile at her and tell her, you know what, I appreciate everything you do. May Allah give you Jannah. Wallahi, when she is so happy, Allah will be happy too. Because the Prophet Muhammad says, the best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. Can you not do that with your children, with your siblings? Talk to them nicely. Say a word that they will not forget. They will remember. That is priceless. It didn't cost you anything. See the rahmah and the mercy of Allah descend upon you in your life. Allah will facilitate for you so much of goodness. May Allah grant us all goodness. May Allah open our doors and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to help one another. Be there for your brothers and sisters when they are suffering a loss, even if it is just by moral support. Even if it is just by a good word. Sometimes the weakness we have is when we hear someone had a loss, we say, good, he deserved it. It's about time. That's a bit rough for a mu'min. Don't say that. You heard someone suffered a loss, say, may Allah make it easy for him. Minimum, minimum you should say. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May he make it easy for all those who are struggling and suffering across the globe. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.